Hello, everyone, and welcome to the third and final episode of the KCS series for 2020, KCS Techniques and Adoption. My name is Tapitha Ishman, and I'm the Marketing Manager of Excalibur Data Systems. And I just wanted to welcome all of you to our webinar today and then talk about a few logistics before we go ahead and get started. The lines are muted and the webinar is being recorded. The recording will be sent out via email to all participants tomorrow and we'll answer questions at the end in a Q&A session, but you can ask questions at any time during the presentation just by typing them into the question window. And now I'm just going to talk a little bit about who Excalibur Data Systems is. We are a leading edge consulting firm guiding organizations through their digital transformation journey. We also work with a long list of strategic partners and leverage best of breed enterprise service management technologies. So in doing so, we help create next generation solutions for our customers. And to kick us off today, I'd like to introduce Jonathan Burdick. He's a senior solution architect at Excalibur Data Systems. So welcome, Jonathan. Thank you, Tabitha. Good afternoon, everybody, or good morning, depending on where you're dialing in from. I'm Jonathan Burdick. I'll be uh, the one that uh, you'll see uh, most of uh, during our time together today. Uh, usually, my uh, my partner in crime is uh, Mike Busan, who's uh, the VP of Excalibur Data Systems and also a senior solution architect. Uh, he may be able to join us uh, a little bit later, but if not, then it'll just be uh, both me and Tabitha for uh, today. Tabitha, I didn't know if you wanted to do your quick poll or whether you just wanted to get started with what we were gonna talk about today. We're just gonna go ahead and get started today. Okay, all right. So today we're going to wrap up our, um, our KCS uh, discussion. This is our third and final uh, webinar. We'll be talking primarily about adoption uh, and, and the techniques that go into that. Just as review though, from uh, the past uh, two sessions, uh, KCS or Knowledge Centered uh, Services is a knowledge process that is really designed to create, reuse, and improve knowledge in both uh, a, co a converged and collaborative uh, way. Um, it's based uh, predominantly on our content or expecting our content to be uh, available or created on demand uh, rather than creating it ahead of time. And it's based on our collective experience as an organization, uh, which is part of the whole paradigm shift that we talked about uh, in the first session, where we were really shifting a lot of our thinking around uh, sort of stereotypical or traditional knowledge habits, and we're moving them over into a new way of tackling uh, knowledge uh, in the environment. So again, uh, the, the basis, the primary uh, practices uh, in KCS are really uh, a part of this double loop process. Uh, and uh, we have this on the screen from the, the Consortium of Service Innovation. And the double loop process, again, is uh, made up of both the solve loop uh, and what's called the evolve loop. And they exist, they both exist to provide an entire uh, holistic uh, methodology uh, that has continuity uh, from end to end. The solve loop really being uh, the sharp end of the spear and being that transactional uh, part of the experience. Uh, these are the individuals uh, in the, the individuals playing roles in this space are doing uh, the predominant amount of, of interaction with your customers. Uh, whereas the Evolve Loop is much more of the strategic uh, side of things, it absolutely uh, requires the Solve Loop to function. Um, in fact, it, it, it almost ceases to exist if the Solve Loop doesn't function. So the Evolve Loop exists to help uh, not only um, provide strategic analysis and guidance and leadership, but also to help uh, not only learn from the solve loop 
side of things, but uh, to help improve it. So for today, uh, we're, we've, we've talked about in the first session, we talked about um, uh, the introduction to the methodology and, and, the, and the principles, the core concepts, the kinds of techniques that we're using. Then in the second webinar, we discussed uh, the solve loop and the evolve loop in, in, in pretty, uh, pretty nice detail. Uh, so today, as we wrap up, we're going to talk about adoption. How do we get, how do we use KCS in our environment? How do we actually start to implement it? So I'm going to go over a few, a few basic things, and then we're going to look at designing this process for success. We're going to talk about key attributes of the adoption, uh, and then we're going to take a look at the four different phases uh, planning, adoption, leveraging, and maximizing. These are the, uh, the phases that represent pretty much the maturity uh, or increasing maturity of, of our adoption schema. And then we'll wrap it up at the very end with just some pitfalls uh, to watch out for, uh, and we'll answer any questions that people might have. So, from a broad overview standpoint, if you've ever been involved with any other large scale organizational change initiative, you will probably not be very surprised to see how uh, the KCS methodology uh, is laid out from an adoption standpoint. Um, it's, it's logical, um, it's um, in an orderly fashion. Um, one of the things I've always liked about the KCS model is that it's it's detailed enough to get you going and get you thinking about things, but it's not so overly detailed that uh, that you just sort of get lost in the weeds. Uh, so um, you know, stepwise, detailed, but not arduously so. We've talked about these four phases, uh, which we will go into later. Probably the most unique features that we will come across as part of the adoption uh, and rollout are kind of one, um, really uh, just as KCS is um, really notable because of its demand-driven baseline, um, we're gonna do the same thing within the adoption. In fact, we need that, um, we need that demand-driven piece um, in order to effectively roll out, but we can't really simulate it or fake it in any particular way. So we will actually do it in the live environment, okay? And we will self-correct along the way while we're doing that. We'll do that through small incremental pieces uh, that are called waves uh, that uh, and we will, we will create a small cadre of people that will start the process out for us. And then over a particular period of time, we will begin to expand that KCS uh, use across more and more and more people in the environment. So we'll see that, uh, that there are a number of key well, I guess we would call them general success activities that that we really need for this to be to be uh, you know a positive experience, not only as part of the rollout, but uh, going forward as we as we continue to mature. Uh, certainly, our ability to provide uh, an honest and transparent assessment of our current state um, and what our life looks like. Um, building an understanding and getting buy-in from the organization uh, and uh, especially at sort of a, at a leadership, maybe a higher ranking leadership level. Uh, certification, which is not necessarily something that's required, but certainly something that would be recommended um, to provide at a minimum, uh, you know, pedigree for the people that are that are involved, but also being able to build upon the things that you're learning um, and have, have some formality uh, for the, the participants. Um, good documentation. Uh, we've, we have to be able to document the, um, 
our plan, our workflow, how we're going to uh, approach uh, life, uh, sort of the, the plan, the work, uh, work, the plan uh, approach for this. Um, we also need good technology. Um, we uh, don't want to put technology, sort of the cart before the horse, uh, but certainly technology is a critical element, especially for um, meeting the demands of certain uh, searching and findability and, and the uh, sort of the, the measurements that we want to be able to uh, learn from our, uh, from our knowledge um, implementation. Um, we have to absolutely be able to train the individuals in our environment, uh, the people who are the coaches, uh, the knowledge workers, the people who are the experts in various domains. And then we have to be able to be ready to do two different things uh, that are pretty important to the overall uh, effort. One, um, we have to be able to transition from metrics that are sort of activity oriented and transactional in nature we have to be able to transition that over to much of a, a value orientation um, and then uh, we also need to be able to see the effort beyond traditional um, organizational boundaries so we're not in kcs we're not really hemmed in uh, to how our organization is structured Okay, like uh, you know, director, manager, lead, that kind of thing. We're not hemmed in by that. And in fact, it's probably better that we're not so that we can get a variety of perspectives and inputs from all levels and widths uh, and heights in the organization. So um, I'm gonna talk about waves here in just a minute, but these are the very key, uh, the, the wave uh, implementation style is, uh, one of the keys uh, to the adoption. Uh, and we're gonna start small, and then we are going to uh, move through these various phases. So we'll start with the, we'll start talking about the waves uh, right now. So I would consider the wave implementation style to be one of the key attributes of this, all right? Um, um, the purpose of it is to is to create a small cadre of excited uh, individuals who are ready to dive in and be sort of the first adopters uh, for the program. Um, I mean, we would never do, um, you know, we we expect um, and need growth out of the various waves that we implement. So doing something like, uh, you know, a big bang uh, approach uh, to life uh, would short circuit the entire effort um, and it would probably bring it to a crawl. So our goal really is to spend time um, as a small unit working out the kinks, and if you recall, we were we would work these things out in the live environment. Uh, so there's no practice session, there's no test place where we 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 sort of practice the process. We've we've worked as part of part of what we're going to look at later, laying this whole thing out so that when we get to the the places where we're rolling this out in these waves, that we're we're ready to go. So starting small, that's key. Big is uh, is not recommended. Um, that'll short circuit our effort. As we go through various phases of the rollout then, those phases really represent uh, the maturity of, of, our, of our implementation. And every phase essentially has a definition it's got a list of activities that uh, that are expected to be performed in that space. It has various techniques. And then it also has what KCS calls an exit criteria. What is it that tells us that we are at the end um, and of this particular wave and that we can continue uh, with the next piece? So, um, uh, I talk a little bit about that, but in the KCS material that uh, you can find online, uh, there's actually a whole list of 
criteria for every phase. So it will provide all sorts of outcomes uh, that you're kind of looking for um, as part of defining that maturity uh, in each space. For the most part, I think most organizations are going to have, or at least going to start with the idea of a single threaded uh, knowledge rollout, meaning like perhaps as part of, uh, you know, an information technology organization, uh, that would be a, a singular domain, if you would. And so that, then so the waves of adoption would exist within that singular domain and broaden out within those people uh, in that environment. But in larger organizations, you'd see that we'd actually have, we could have potentially multiple domains of knowledge. Uh, perhaps we have not only an IT organization that is going to use KCS, but maybe we have, um, you know, maybe we have a facilities organization or a financial part of our organization uh, that's going to use uh, KCS. These would be multiple domains. So um, you can probably appreciate that uh, even in a singular domain wave rollout, things could get things could get a little complicated. In a multi-domain scenario, you really have to uh, have thought through the various um, not only the waves, but the domains in which they um, uh, they operate and when they're going to come online. So oftentimes what organizations will do uh, is create a center of excellence for KCS. Now, a center of excellence or a COE is not really something that, um, you know, that's not a new concept uh, in the world. Um, it's been around for quite a while. It's used in lots of cases where um, there needs to be a, a, a bit of a central brain trust, if you will, um, for a particular rollout or for a particular uh, process or workflow that's engaged uh, in the organization. So this doesn't necessarily have to be something that's, that's formal, you know, a round table, so to speak, of, of people that are voted in. Um, but oftentimes it is uh, even a bit more informal in that there are um, process experts and people who are champions of of the uh, of the implementation of the rollout. Um, and while it's not known officially as a center of excellence, these are the people that can ultimately provide oversight uh, into what's going on. Now, the other key adoption attribute is the coaching piece, all right? Um, if you were part of our previous webinars, we talked a little bit about the roles that people play uh, within the process, and, uh, and that would include roles on the, uh, the solve side or the, the more transactional side of, of the uh, of the double loop process, uh, as well as roles that are uh, predominantly oriented in the evolve side or more of the uh, sort of the analytical, the research, uh, the strategic side. The coach is probably a little bit of both. Uh, we will often see the role of a coach played by an, an individual who has the traits um, and takes on the practices of what would be called the KCS publisher role that has the ability to essentially push content into the knowledge base, okay? That's their basically their implicit approval uh, for, for the work. But what we also see is that these individuals are typically practice experts or they become practice experts in this space. Um, and, but they also have more sort of intrinsic, uh, you know, maybe softer qualities about them, um, including being somebody who can be a change agent and, and can encourage people and provide positivity for uh, in, at, in those situations where things come to a grind and you really need somebody to 
to um, you know remind you why we're doing this and why it was a good idea um, and also people who can be influencers in the environment as well as individuals who can model a particular way of behaving or a, a way of thinking um, you know when I say influencer I, I don't really mean like a social media influencer. I mean people who who are looked upon in the organization as uh, individuals that um, that that have uh, depth that have been around for a while and who really understand um, not only the organization but the environment, and they can help push things forward. So coaching is a really really important part of how KCS is designed to succeed because uh, training if we were just to train people and we have a you know maybe a couple classes or something like that um, that's good um, in a more sort of point in time um, approach to um, informing whoever about whatever we want to inform them about but then those individuals leave that and they go back to do whatever else they were doing and they forget about what we trained them on in the first place. So that's why coaching, when we add coaching to the training element, it really brings um, not only uh, you know, a higher skill level ultimately to the individuals in the organization, but um, increased productivity. Plus those individuals who are playing that role can actually do that work Kind of day in and day out, even uh, and it doesn't and it doesn't look very formal. You know, we don't say I'm going. We're am I going to have a coaching session? Uh, it certainly could happen, but a lot of the times it's going to be this informal interaction with people in the organization, and that's how we're going to build up the school the score level. Because our goal really, uh, with the purpose of the coach, is to develop this individual proficiency. Um, and 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 proficiency at a team level, uh, especially uh, in, uh, you know over the long haul. Um, and as you will see, with coaching, we want to eventually bring on more coaches to the environment so that it doesn't so that the burden isn't all on one or more uh, or one individual or very few individuals. So one of the ways that um, probably the the ways that we kind of come up with coaches um, really comes down to these kind of two basic approaches. If you've ever heard of like a, an organizational network analysis or ONA, um, that would definitely be the the more formal type of of identification of the people. Uh, who would play in that role? That is a a pretty high stakes, I think, um, way of determining who might best fit into that coaching coaching role. They uh, often third parties do this kind of work for organizations to figure out uh, how everybody in the organization fits together um, from you know, maybe the number of you know, perceived connections that certain individuals have in the organization to kind of how central they are to, to uh, you know, not only um, particular other other individuals, uh, but what we would call betweenness, like uh, connectivity, the connective tissue between you know a part of the organization over here and a part of the organization over here. Some people have that, some people don't but we would want to be able to uh, evaluate just how close or far certain individuals um, um, stand within that space. And then the same thing kind of applies for this idea of reach. You know, how, how, what kind of trajectory do people have from an influence perspective or a relational perspective in the environment um, that can position them well uh, to be, um, uh, a coach and have have a lot of touch points in the environment. Now, if that's like a little too much for people, oftentimes it gets done uh, informally. 
because many people, if you've spent any time in an organization, and you probably don't even have to spend a lot of time in an organization to kind of understand who, who might already fit this kind of role without doing some sort of uh, quantitative uh, exercise. So, you know, I'd call this kind of the ad hoc network analysis, but as you're looking at this, that where, I mean, and it's not just one person that's deciding you're gonna be a coach or you're gonna be a coach, I guess that could, be, that could happen, uh, but you know, you're kind of looking collectively as a as a team or as a as a as a domain or department on you know who are the people that we go to when we have issues when we need advice when we're trying to figure out how to approach a particular issue who are the people that are sort of naturally disposed to that who are we attracted to to do that and that is that's another way uh, albeit informally uh, to be able to come up with those uh, individuals. So making a choice here in, 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 in placing the people uh, into these roles uh, can have uh, monumental effects on the quality of the adoption of, of really anything but KCS in particular. And the same is true in the opposite direction. If we were to put people into this role that uh, were not really fit for it, uh, that would be detrimental to our rollout. And it would have lasting like long-term effects uh, in our, you know, our ability to really maintain a solid maturing program. So we really wanna be careful. Uh, about who we uh, put in the uh, coaching roles. So, you know, a non-exhaustive list of qualities that we're looking for oftentimes are people who are, are, are able to communicate effectively, not only talk, uh, but listen, um, be active listeners. Um, uh, they have kind of a, they have a demonstrated ability to, um, to, master the program there they have quickly acquired the mastery of, of, of the program and maybe amongst other things um, uh, they have maybe uh, the qualities that uh, you know look like you know they are natural inquirers of things um, maybe they are good advocates for people or process um, or different technology in the organization um, but they also can appreciate everybody else and reflect upon how, what's going on. Um, so they, not only are they committed to the team and in, uh, individual success, but they're sort of this quiet, um, you know, quiet force, if you will, in an organization uh, that uh, is able to propel people forward and a, and a cause forward with, without necessarily being the most vocal people um, in the room, all right? So when we're looking at the entire scheme of adoption then, uh, we are looking at this four phase um, division of the rollout. And these really reflect uh, a, a particular level of maturity uh, in your KCS journey. So in phase one, uh, on the left-hand side of your screen, we are at kind of a low level of maturity. We're doing the foundational and kind of dirty work uh, that is required uh, to be successful. Um, we're, we might be running, uh, you know, uh, design workshops and we might be looking at uh, other things like that. So we are setting the tone um, and getting things prepared. In phase two then you can see that here's where we are actually rolling out um, and getting the adoption started. First with a, you know, a, a cadre of individuals of a particular size uh, kind of just depending on maybe not only how big your organization is, but you know maybe how many people uh, in those roles um, have kind of 
you know, are excited about it, right? Um, and so you can see that as the waves continue, we're, we not only um, sort of naturally uh, you know, assimilate additional people into the KCS methodology, but we might we might not do that in equal chunks. So on uh, you know, wave one might, you know, in a hundred people, if, you know, if a hundred people are in the IT domain, you know, maybe we have 20 or 25 that are part of the wave one. And maybe, you know, maybe there's another 25 that are part of wave two. And then maybe there's 50 as part of the third wave. If we were to do that. Then we look at the final, uh, the latter half of the rollout, which is uh, where we actually begin to start changing um, how everything kind of looks. So we want to not only, um, we're, 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 we're obviously doing a lot of work from a coaching and domain development point of view, but um, we're really starting to leverage the work that we're trying to achieve. Phase four then is continuous improvement. Um, it's interesting that uh, like there's a lot of material uh, from a KCS standpoint around in phase one, phase two, and phase three, but there's really not a lot in the in this maximizing space. So um, you know we I think we often find in organizations that continuous service improvement just almost kind of happens. Maybe it doesn't. Maybe we don't necessarily call it that, but I think most people that work in organizations are naturally disposed to um, improving things, right? And that's continuous improvement. It's happening kind of in the moment. It's happening when it needs to happen. Um, and so that you know, sort of is the culmination of this, of this adoption. You can see that there's a timeline there. Uh, and of course, this is just a sample. Uh, but this could take anywhere from you know a couple of months to maybe a year or more to get through. It just kind of depends on um, you know uh, you know your adoption, how people catch on, and 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 the exit criteria. How do we know when we can move to the next level, which we'll see um, here in a moment? So the planning and design piece. All right, this is our first stage we have to know what our current state is that's not a uncommon thing in in many parts of the business world we're always wanting we always need to know kind of where we're at um so we can use something like an opportunity assessment survey that just helps us it's almost like glorified documentation really or just um sort of uh what would i call it uh, sort of inspired documentation, if you will, where um, it's kind of prompting you to fill out the content um, in order to come up with, you know, a, a, a solid look. Basically getting everything out on the table and understanding where you are. Um, establishing the right people in the environment, that's, um, that's key. Obviously, we talked about coaches uh, we, who are a, a very, very important part of this, but they're not the only people that are involved. Um, we have leaders, not only from a hierarchy standpoint in our organization, but we have leaders at all levels of organizations who are providing, um, you know, they're providing guidance and assistance and thought leadership uh, within their sphere of influence. You know these these folks are as important as any um, in the environment and cross-functional. Um, you know this is not necessarily limited to uh, you know a single team like say a service desk team and not involving anybody else um, at any other level really right. I mean this this uh, can and actually should be a blend of people not only horizontally but potentially vertically right so that we get this uh we get uh, you know a, a quilt so to speak of the various pieces and parts that make up um you know not only the 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 uh the planning and design section but how we actually get this content and re, um, implementation out into the field 
um, we would have a workshop. We would start talking about, um, uh, we would get the fundamentals of KCS down. Uh, so that would be um, either having a more formal class taught about KCS, uh, maybe having a few people go through the certification process, uh, but learning the lingo, uh, uh, which is often kind of the foundational element of many, many uh, certifications and other kinds of programs. You're just learning the language that people use and why they use it so that when you go on to something else at a higher level, you, you already kind of understand what they're talking about. Now, design sessions. Um, we, not just me or Excalibur, but you know, we as a whole, we, we do design sessions kind of all the time uh, to kind of come up with the work plan that we're going to uh, lay out. So uh, we uh, have a need to design our workflow, what things are gonna look like, how we're going to assess performance, um, how we're gonna define the waves uh, and how we might structure the roles uh, that people will play. And then um, the evidence of readiness. So it's like a big fancy term for, well, how the heck are we gonna know when we're done with this phase? And um, subsequently, how are we going to know when we are done with the other phases? So coming up with that criteria, um, that exit criteria that allows us to feel comfortable with moving to the next step and uh, with the hopes that we haven't forgotten nine things that were really, really, really important um, that we should have taken care of, but we forgot about. So uh, we want to make sure that we are cataloging uh, that readiness evidence so that we're prepared um, to do that um, going forward. So then once the design and that planning is done, then we have, we move into that phase two. So we've started at a low level of maturity, but when we're ready to move into that first wave of adoption, we're increasing our maturity just a little bit. We are launching this first wave, um, which, which essentially establishes the foundation for the KCS work, okay, and it works out all of the kinks, or well, at least most of them, right? Um, we are involved with training, um, not only uh, from a coaching standpoint, but all of the knowledge workers uh, that are involved in the solve loop side of the house, primarily. Uh, there. So um, the, the folks that are the knowledge workers who were involved in these in these kind of day-to-day -day customer transactions were working through those areas to define and sort of cut off the as many sharp edges as we can in this process uh, so that we can build out a higher level of individual uh, proficiency here. Um, so the coaching development, that's obviously important, um, as I talked about earlier. Um, we really want to um, be able to establish solid coaches in this first wave, because when we take on subsequent waves, we are, we are going to need uh, and we're going to want to have additional coaches in the mix, right? So um the coaches that we first establish really need to be champions of what we're doing so that they can sort of spawn new coaches and that then the we begin to spread the load out uh, in our organization uh, even more we'll work out uh the 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 scoring of articles and the sampling of content uh, this is done through what's called the Article Quality Index or the AQI um, and the um, Process Adherence Review or the PAR. So uh, we're, we're evaluating how the work is getting done um, and the techniques that are being used to perform the work. Okay, um, We are concerned ultimately uh, KCS 
from a measurement standpoint is much more concerned about outcomes uh, than activities, but of course we have to have activity to create the outcome, right? So, so these the the we're going to hone those pieces in this time so that um, we're better prepared for when we take on you know a bigger project. Uh, you know we're going to you know we're going to build the first level of our house before we decide that we're going to add on a three car garage and an upper uh, you know a second floor. This is also the time, okay, where we are doing our technology piece. I haven't really talked about technology here and you know and I don't for really the remainder of our time but it is an important component. Um, I believe that technology should follow the process. I mean sometimes we reverse them because that's the way it just kind of has to be but um, we are looking to implement or refresh the technology uh, to help support the methodology. Um, in the KCS space, especially since we are turning a lot, we want to turn over a lot of um, to self-service. We want our self-service users to be successful. So we're kind of looking for, uh, you know, from a very technical or, um, you know, interface point of view, we are looking for responsiveness. We're looking for, does it have the available functionality? Um, are we getting it integrated uh, appropriately with the other tools we have, and does the UI does it work out well for us? You know, do we move to move to move through things around, uh, things of that nature? Um, so w when we when we get to the point from an individual contribution standpoint, uh, where are the wave one participants don't require all of this intensive training uh you know they don't uh, you know if you're if you're a parent and you've heard of the helicopter uh, parenting thing you know you, you know you don't require the coach to constantly hover over you to make sure that the work is getting done the right way then when you get to like the 90 percent mark then uh, you know, that that is a pretty good indicator that you're kind of ready to move on. Now, that's not the only exit criteria, uh, but but from a staffing readiness, sort of mental preparedness standpoint, that is pretty important uh, to, to take, in, take into account. So you would not want to be leaving the, the phase or wave one, rather, um, if people are just not ready to roll. So that's why the, some of these things, especially these waves, they could they could take a variable amount of time. Not everybody is going to learn this at the same rate. Um, uh, maybe not everybody is going to have the opportunity to do that. Uh, and you might just want to solidify those things a little bit longer. I mean, I've always sort of said in, in a variety of establishments that I've been that, that I think it's much better for an organization to uh, just spend a little bit longer getting prepared. And in a year, no one's going to remember that you you added three weeks to something just to be better prepared, right? They're gonna remember how prepared you were. So those are all pretty key. Now then the subsequent waves, all right, we are expanding the workflow. We are expanding people's involvement. So now we've taken one group. Now we're getting another group involved. We're getting another group involved. If we have to make technology tweaks, we do it. Um, we also have an opportunity to uh, tweak how we measure things. So, um, I mean, you can almost sort of think of that first wave as, as kind of the experimental. You know, it's like a lab. We're, we're working it out. And again, we're working it out in real time, um, live with people. So it's so not like a practice squad on some other field, it's the real place. So we're able to, we're not, not only able to, but we will simply be almost drawn to the fact that if something is not working right, or we're not measuring the right thing, we just figure out how to measure that better or how to improve on that. And, um, 
that would be those would be some of the other things that we would be looking at and evaluating on a periodic basis to say all right when are we ready to roll this out to 50 more people are we ready to do that do we have the technology that we need are we measuring things the right way have we come to the right conclusions um, about our uh, about how wave one or subsequent waves have functioned right um, we also are maturing and fostering those roles that people are playing, especially the coaching, all right? So if we, our goal ultimately is to, if our goal is to improve individual efficiency and team and staff performance, um, we can't put all that on one person or two people. So our coaches, have to multiply and we have we have to take two coaches and maybe we turn it into three or we turn them into four or we turn them into five but we want to be ready for that and then uh all of them can participate uh they can learn from the wave one participants and coaches while the wave two people are ramping up and um and then also being coached by uh, more proficient people. So um, pretty logical uh, there uh, as we go. And, and, and again, we want to look at the exit criteria for the various phases or the various waves um, and the phases. Uh, but when our knowledge workers uh, do not require as much attention and you know, maybe the wheels spin without us pedaling as hard, then those are good, and that's at least one good indicator that that we're uh, ready to move on. So in, in, in the leveraging phase or phase, phase three, we're obviously going to continue to coach and learn. We're gonna reinforce people's behavior, uh, the good behavior, um, and we will, also continue then to develop the evolve loop content if you were with us for previous uh, webinars uh, we introduced a little bit about what that evolve loop content looks like we are also starting the um the shift from the kind of adoption phase of pedaling and measuring to the continuous service improvement thing um, which is going to look a little bit different. It, we are going to want to be trans, uh, looking at more at um, value and effectiveness rather than activities. Um, we are also looking at the self-service success. I mean, one of the major pieces here uh, that we don't really ever want to overlook is the fact of who we're doing this for in the first place. We are doing it for our whole organization, not doing it because we don't have anything else to do or because we're bored. We're doing it so that we can enable our, our the people in our organization. So, you know, are they able to find the stuff that they're looking for? Um, is it complete? What was it missing if it was incomplete? Um, do they have access to it in a way uh, that we would like? Um, can they navigate it? I mean, this comes kind of comes back to that whole UI thing. Um, and, you know, are we marketing it well? Um, that's a big component to how efforts like this get, get accomplished is just, you know, the communication around it. Hey, we're gonna be doing this thing and you're gonna be part of the consumer process of this. And it's being done for you in the sense that we, we want to help you because that's what we're here to do. So evaluating the, you know, how successful are we with this? Um, we're also then ensuring that we're getting um, uh, KDEs in place. These are knowledge domain experts. These are the people that, that really know certain portions of our organization well and can contribute even additional kind of strategic uh, content when appropriate. Uh, into the KB, but they can also take a look at uh, content that is being created um, and seeing whether or not it is, um, you know, even uh, even if it can be an improved, even if it has been submitted to the KB already. All right. And then evaluating measures. I talked about this a little bit already, but kind of 
preparing to reset, uh, going from a bit more of a, an activity-based thing to, you know, looking more at how effective we are um, as a group. Then lastly here, this one's this one doesn't have a whole lot of content here, continuous service improvement. So all of this culminates with a with a, a continual way of of looking for the pieces and parts that need to be that need to be shored up um, whenever they need to be shored up and getting it done. Um, so that we're you know we're not saving them up. Um, it's just a it's just as it's called it's a continuous uh, cycle. So this is where we're at kind of the highest level of maturity as we have moved up the various ranks. Um, uh, you know. I wouldn't necessarily, if I were to look at this, I was, if I were to look at the various phases as sort of this upward trend, I wouldn't necessarily say that like, oh, you've gotten to the phase four, you're completely done. Um, well, you might end up having a whole other domain come online for KCS, which requires you to almost circle back to the beginning or use the existing uh, planning that you did as a way to start from scratch. So, you know, maybe you've maybe you've done you've cl climbed that plateau um, in one domain, but perhaps you have to circle around and start over. But you are all part of the feeder for how that will work. The last thing uh, for our time today is just looking out for common pitfalls um, here. Um, some of the biggest things. Uh, uh, you know, a couple of these would probably, um, you know, could probably fall into whatever project, um, but like a lack of leadership, and not just the folks at the at the top, but the folks at all levels that we need to participate in that leadership spot or those roles. I mean, if we just don't have it, then you know, then this methodology this sort of dies out, or it doesn't um, it doesn't take on the it doesn't have the uh, the vitality that it may have been designed to have. Um, ineffective uh, coaching, um, you know, again, could you limp through this? Yeah, you probably could, but if you had better coaching, you might really, really dramatically improve uh, your outcomes uh, there. So keeping track of and keeping a look at uh, you know, how people are coaching and what is being coached is going to be vitally important. Um, workflow designed by people other than the knowledge workers. This this kind of happens all the time and not just in KCS, where, where the people that are doing the work and know the work aren't participating in how to redesign it and make it better. So it's being it's almost like they're being told, here's how to do it. Um, that would be a mistake in this case. Um, you have expertise, you have people who are smart. They uh, might not have every answer that you need, but they participate in it. They should, uh, they should be part of the, the planning, the design, um, and so that they not only bear uh, they get to have that autonomy and they build that expertise, but they also bear uh, accountability for the work that they're doing. Lastly, um, if we can't transition well uh, from how we, what kind of metrics we are using or what we're looking at um, in the beginning of the rollout versus kind of the long term, um, you know, then we can kind of lose our way a little bit. Again, you know, would 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 the whole methodology fall on its face? You know, probably not. I mean, it's a pitfall. It's not, uh, you know, it's not a chasm that cannot be crawled out of. But um, it would introduce maybe um, less of an understanding of how uh, things are working and um, be providing less insight uh, than what you would uh, maybe commonly be looking for, okay? 
So at this point, um, and we've got a, just a couple of minutes left, if there are any questions uh, that you might have, this would, this is a great time to uh, ask them. Um, Tabitha, I don't know if we have any questions um, from the group from this point or want to Yeah, we did have a couple come in um, during your presentation. So I think um, one of the first ones we'll do is, is a C KCS certification required? Um, no, um, it will add some validity to what you do, so, you know, similar to any other certification that you have, uh, would achieve. Um, certainly there are, you know, I, uh, paper tigers out there that have a lot of certifications, but don't really know the material. Um, the really neat thing about KCS actually is that the entire methodology is out there for the picking online and you can read it from start to finish. Um, and if you were to do that uh, diligently, actually, I think you would come up with a lot of really great things. You would benefit from a certification for sure, um, or at least some formal instruction on it, right? Which then ultimately culminates in the certification. Uh, but you can learn quite a bit about it um, and get adjusted to it just by reading the content that's available, that's been made uh, available online. Thank you. Um, and then another question that came in is an organizational network analysis, something that I can just do on my own? Yeah, boy, I don't, I don't know. There's a lot of organizations, um, I mean, ONAs are can actually be somewhat sophisticated uh, and um, often take into account a lot of nuance and impact everybody in that particular sphere of influence. So um, you might be able to come up with a way to do that on your own, maybe informally, which is not a bad thing, but I don't know if I would try to conduct a formal one without kind of really understanding all the ins and outs there. So there's a lot of organizations that'll do that, oftentimes not even related to KCS, but just generally, sometimes organizations are just kind of interested in understanding the dynamic of the people that are connected and how they work together. Um, Sometimes having a third party might not actually be a bad idea because not only do they bring the expertise, but they uh, can help avoid some pitfalls there. Um, you know, the natural outcome um, for KCS is to understand who the middle, who kind of the the, the middle people are, the, the the people that are central to and between things um, on a on a typical on a typical day or weekly basis. But that also means, though, that in order to determine that, um, you're looking kind of at the entire staff, in which you know some people are not necessarily as influential in an organization. So those are sensitive topics. Potentially, might be easier just to have a third party uh, help you out with that. Thank you. Um, I think we're just going to move to the next slide, and then we will close out the presentation for today. And so I just wanted to thank everyone for joining and then also thank Jonathan for presenting this deep dive KCS series for us. All of the recordings are on our YouTube channel and also the website. So make sure to check those out if you haven't. And then here I provided some of our social handles um, just for you to stay tuned for our, and up to date for our upcoming webinar schedule in 2021. Um, and we just wanted to thank you all today and we will see you next year. So thank Bye -bye. you, Jonathan. Take care.